in my career, I have never tried to sell a portrait. That's not how I market what I do. People, people spend money on things they want. We'll just start right there, right? You can't, you can't sell rotten apples to people because people don't want them, right? Doesn't matter what you charge, rotten apples are rotten apple. A painting that doesn't have any value to somebody, you can't sell. But if you have a painting that has value, when somebody sees it, they like, they walk away and they're like, oh, I got to go back and take another look. Man, I really want this in my home. Then you can sell it, right? And that comes down to your artistic vision and the quality of your work along with the price, right? The price that you charge has to fit within the range of the budgets of the people that you interact with. So if you're trying to sell a $50,000 portrait in a place where people, people make that in a year, you're not going to be able to make sales. But if you're in a place where people have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of expendable cash, they're not having to decide, mm, do I have health insurance this year or do I buy the portrait? They're just having to decide whether or not they like what they see and they like it in their home, right? And so you have to have the right audience. If you're charging $200 for a portrait or $500 for a portrait, obviously the pool of people who can easily write that check grows dramatically. Again, if they want it. That being said, how you sell a portrait matters, right? So again, I've said I'm a portrait painter. And in my career, I have never tried to sell a portrait. That's not how I market what I do. Uh, because you can't hard sell this stuff. This is something that you, you have to, it has to resonate with somebody. And until they see, until they see the portrait of their child or their wife or their family, or, they can't envision it, right? And so what you have to do is you have to excite them about something much grander than a portrait that has a price tag attached to it, right? The moment you start, the moment you start trying to sell the portrait to them as, as an idea, you'll see people back away. One, it's generally speaking, it's an expensive, it's an expensive purchase. Um, especially as you start getting into the, the higher end pros, it's an expensive purchase. And even though they can see that there are beautiful paintings of other people, they don't know how they're going to turn out. And they, again, most people, we haven't, we're not growing up or living in a time when portraits are really, you're not seeing them in everyone's homes, but look, you have 7 billion people in the world. If you do 12 portraits a year and you do them for 50 years, I mean, like out of 7 billion people, it's not too hard to find that many clients. It's just not that many people, right? I mean, 12 a year, you could make a hell of a living doing that, even if you're not charging a lot of money. And so the people are out there. It's how you access them. And so the way that I sell a portrait is I try, I talk about why I love portraits, why that I'm excited about being a portrait painter. And the reason that that's the case is that it is part of a tradition that goes back to the beginning of man. Like, you know, I, this is one of the things, and I always talk about this because to me, I get goosebumps every time I think about it. So you think about George Washington. Before the internet, you know, and the Kardashians, George Washington was the most recognized man in the world. There wasn't a place in the world you could go that people didn't recognize him. And yet George Washington died 35 years before the invention of the camera. No photograph was ever taken, and yet across the planet, he's the most recognized man in the world. And the reason is that Gilbert Stewart painted him. And, he went, and that image wound up on our dollar bill, and it's, but it's widely spread around the world. And so there being no photographs, the portrait, basically what it's done is, it is, it is it's immortalized him. Anybody, anybody who was around before like 1820 or so, 1830, and that we know what they look like, Napoleon, Benjamin Franklin. I mean, these are faces. Like if you walked into a room with 10,000 people, you could find Benjamin Franklin, yet he was dead. He was dead 30 or so years before the invention of the camera. That's the power of a portrait. Why wouldn't you want your child to be part of that tradition or your wife, right? And those of us who have kids, you know, they're like incredible. And then six minutes later, they're a completely different human being. Oop, and they're incredible again. And then six months later, like you don't even recognize them, but they're incredible again. And each one of these moments is a moment like, boy, if you could just bottle this moment. And a portrait does that, right? And so if you can get somebody excited about the power of a portrait, 
You're standing there excited about it. And you have the ability to deliver on that excitement, right? And as, as an example, you know, the movie Rocky, um, when that movie came out, boxing gyms around the world boomed. Everybody walked out of Rocky and wanted to learn how to box, right? And the excitement level as they walked out of the theaters was so high. When you talk to somebody about a portrait, if you're excited about it and you're able to rev them up like that about about the significance of it, they'll start, the people who it would resonate with will start to realize that it's a gaping hole in their life. And like I said, you're standing there capable of delivering. You've excited them, you've inspired them, and you're standing there with the skills to, develop, to deliver. At no point do you say, by the way, my portraits are this, they cost X and you know, you don't try to sell it. If they want the portrait based on their excitement now, they will ask you. And again, let's say you go to an event and you're sitting around talking to people and one person has interest. You do that once a month. You're booked for the year. It's, I mean, it's, it's really, and you'd be surprised because every place you do a portrait, if you do it right, it generates clients because everybody wants, when they see it, they realize it's missing in their life too. So. Anyway, that was a lot more than uh, that was a lot more than I was planning. But but that's basically that's basically like for me. That's how I sell what I do. Yeah, yeah. We kind of morphed into a different direction, but um, overall, I I think this is a fantastic call. It's so awesome to kind of talk about how to really start portraits, right? Because everybody wants to get to that place where they're creating those goosebump portraits that are unbelievable and that people see and really are moved by and want to have in their homes and you know to remember their children or their family members by um but it starts it starts very simple right it starts with just those basic forms that we talked about way at the beginning of this call yeah yeah and i would say like just one last thing on this on the, like the the you know doing the paintings as a career you take somebody like john singer sergeant who did i mean i imagine thousands of portraits i mean they've got books and books and books of his stuff he didn't go out and network and meet all of those people. The vast majority of those people came to him through jobs he already did. And so if you are doing beautiful work, people see it. Some of those people are going to want it for themselves. And so once you get the ball rolling, as long as you are delivering something beautiful, clients will always be, they'll always be there. And that doesn't matter what it is. There are people, I always joke around about people you know, there's there's somebody who loves every, you know ever any subject. So like, I always talk about painting what you love. You know, any place in the United States, there's any at any time, any weekend of the year in the United States, there's a there's a convention for just about everything. And I use I always talk about thimbles. You know, so you'll find a thimble convention somewhere in the United States every weekend of the year, every weekend. I don't understand thimbles, but there it is. If you love thimbles and you paint thimbles, you will find a client base for it because there are specialty thimbles that there's only one in the world. And if you make a painting of it, somebody who wants the thimble but can't have it because it's owned by someone else will want the painting. It doesn't matter what the subject is, portraits, horses like Piper does, thimbles, there's a market. And so always paint what you love and you'll, the people who love what you do will find you. And you'll have you'll have a rabid base of people who will buy what you do. It doesn't matter what it is. Don't don't chase. Well, these seem to sell. Paint what you love and paint it beautifully. You'll always be you'll always be okay, and you'll love you'll love your job. You'll get up every day looking forward to it. That is fantastic advice. All right. Well, Kevin, do you have anything else? Anything else to add to this conversation? I mean. Um, I go back to the very beginning. When you're trying to develop these skills, keep it simple. Keep it simple, one step at a time. Perfect the first step. Get your footing, then move forward. And if you can, whether it's Evolve or another program uh, that's offering those basics, capitalize on them. Take advantage of them. You know, I mean, I I'm primarily self-taught, and I can tell you that I have for many, many, many years, struggled needlessly to figure out how to make things work. Um, those struggles have made it possible for me to build the Evolve curriculum. Um, and so I'm thankful for them. 
but I can tell you, I labored needlessly for for so long. And evolve is evolve is my way of shortening that curve for other people. It's how I pay it forward. You know, I was speaking to somebody earlier, and I was saying, you know, they asked me why I why I built evolve. And I say, you know, the art world has been incredibly generous and v extremely kind to me. If not for art, I would be I would be a construction worker. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I did construction. I loved it when I was doing it. Um, but if not for evolve, I mean, if not for art, I would have been a construction worker. And the world that was open to me through art, I mean, is just just amazing. And so for me, if I can give back, if I can pay that forward with what I've learned and make it possible for other people to, to change their life and get into a, a career, build a life around art, which they love, which feeds their soul, that's what the program is for. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you for going um, through all of that. If you're just joining in now, make sure you go back and from the beginning. Um, and in the comment section, I have added in um, the link to our YouTube page. Um, check out our YouTube page every Friday. We have new videos and um, you guys can go back and watch Daniel Fulta talk about um, creating a portrait in grayscale, which is really a great kind of additional video to what we talked about today. So um, we will see you guys soon. Have a great week. And as always, if you have any questions, you can always comment on the video. You can contact us and we hope to see you guys soon. Have a nice night, guys. Take care.